Hi everybody. Uh, what we will talk today about? Uh, we will talk regarding Node.js development in next year. For that, we need to understand what changes in our tool set do we have and uh, how we will use them. So, we will start with uh, my experience. Uh, first of all, I'm working as fractional CTO. It means that uh, US-based startup typically hire me as contractor to use best practices. I very often share my experience with the uh, Ukrainian community via Telegram channel, uh, name it as Not Recipes, and also as a Google developer expert, I lead GDG Cloud Kiev. So, what is today agenda from product standpoint? We focus at on product development. And what does this actually mean? First of all, we focus it on business needs. It's top of our pyramid. Our product from uh, Node.js or Python or PHP is exposed as API. It can be GraphQL WebSockets. And typically, business is actually worried about integration between our front end on mobile client and our back end exposed as Node.js. Uh, services or maybe any other language and if you will be uh, honest business don't care don't care about your code about node.js or python or whatever they care regarding latency uh, and uh, uh, development cost of api would be great as node.js developers and actually, under the hood, after the uh, API gateway, we have our code level. And uh, all of that run in some infrastructure. Let's zoom a little bit our code level, and it can be split in three layers. It's application code. It's what we, as product developers do on daily basis. Our system code is what we need to run this application code. It can be libraries, SDK or frameworks. It can be our internal code, what we not open source. But in perfect world, every system code we want to have has open source. And the last but not the least is our runtime. If we will say regarding this three parts, application layer, application code is our SRC folder. System code is what we store in node modulus. And something would you uh, count as internal framework. And runtime, it's actually a specific version of Node.js what we typically pin in our Docker file. During this talk, I will uh, focus you on these three parts. And if you will have time, I will share my experience regarding other part of our ecosystem. So let's start. Application code. On application code, we received some new changes because of uh, ECMAScript new features. Friendly reminder, uh, we have the C39, uh, which responsible for drive for proposals. And there are five stages. Actually, stage zero, we are programmers, we start counting from zero, is initial idea. Uh, when it formatted and describe a problem, it's uh, stage one. And if you interested in interactive what uh, actually 
re uh, core reason of evolving JavaScript, you will see that a lot of ideas is actually on stage one. Some of them are actually draft of what are discussed. And when we have candidate, uh, we start to use it in production code. Why? Because actually from stage three, TypeScript typically start to add this syntaxes to uh, TypeScript features. And then we have well adoption of uh, uh, stage three candidates, we can merge this proposal in the specification. So let's see what during the previous year uh, and current year we received in, ch in changed uh, ECMAScript features. First of all, Node.js and TypeScript received explicit resource management. What this mean? Typically, when we need to uh, make cleanup for our resources, we uh, use something like final. On this example, you can see typical solution would even uh, describe in TypeScript. Then we, on the end of working with resource, we need to clean up. And on garbage collecting phase, dispose will be run. Before that, we typically need to use finally. So if we had some error, we need to catch this error. But anyway, we need to make cleanup of this resource. Node.js and JavaScript received this functionality. It's good. We can use that not only for file management, but also for management our uh, resources uh, like uh, delete something uh, from third party API or uh, close our database transaction. If we be honest that it will be not application code for most cases, it will be system code, but internal system code, not like uh, uh, something code you will find in nowadays frameworks. But who knows, maybe a big part of TypeScript decorators for transactional uh, will be re-implemented with this disposable pattern. Uh, I'm a little worried that this, it will be not uh, very common use and for make something similar, I would like to highlight that we have several years of a board controller inside Node.js, but it's not common use for product code, uh, but it's highly recommended to use that for cases when you need to manage how long a connection to database or third party should run. So if it was run too long, you need to use focus operation. Most of modern SDKs like AWS, S3 or any of cloud vendors support a board controller. So use that. Next feature would we have uh, for improve our application uh, code is change array by copy. Actually, this things it's not very often used in a Node.js code because we don't tend to store and share some data between request from our backend request. But in front-end world, uh, changing by copy, it's something what we want to do because we render all, all the time front-enders need to think regarding working with uh, 
uh, objects on arrays uh, from a re-render perspective. React developers know what I mean. Similar feature would already exist in our uh, code base is structured clone. With this feature, you can create a new object uh, what is full copy of what object do you have, including uh, our circle references. Uh, these two features create for us ability to work with our code and be sure that during uh, creating some uh, application code, you accidentally will not um, affect different requests. Example from uh, my production code looks very trivial. You want to have default value what you will, based on business logic, modify for send response to the client. And in this case, instead of uh, create some function what will return all the time as this default value, you can use structured colon. Maybe you will do this under the hood in this function. Let's go to next things what is very often question regarding application code, JavaScript or TypeScript. From my perspective, this question resolved two years and two years ago, but it's still holy war topics. And my personal opinion and business needs is TypeScript. Why? Because if you will look of code base ownership cost, it consists of two parts: development cost. So, how much time and resources engineering team spent for uh, actually develop this code? And second part of the ownership cost is maintainability cost. And this maintainability cost for TypeScript is significantly cheaper. And because of that, all ownership cost for TypeScript code base is cheaper. JavaScript wide uh, better flexibility. You don't worry about types, so you can manage them with JS doc blocks, all of that. But ability to refactor your code base with TypeScript is much better. One more thing what we need to highlight that Microsoft products like TypeScript is uh, what we as JavaScript and uh, Node.js developer, Node developers significantly use. And uh, during this year, uh, for Hollywood TypeScript with JavaScript, I typically add one um, question. I also don't use GitHub Copilot for development. And uh, uh, it's strange to see that very often it stands to be similar answer. And I would like to uh, recommend you check GitHub Copilot if you didn't do that, because it will significantly speed up your development. Uh, for example, SQL queries or writing some seed data will be speed up in five times. If you're talking regarding TypeScript benefits, GitHub Copilot will better understand uh, your source code created with TypeScript. It's already proven and uh, you can see this in uh, Office Hours or GitHub Copilot. So what we need to know uh, from Node.js perspective regarding TypeScript. In big TypeScript uh, documentation, you can see that they recommend 
to use extend and instead of trying to find solution how you should configure your TypeScript compiler for Node.js, you need to just use extend. So this is a screenshot from uh, TypeScript and of course nowadays you need to use LTS version, it's 20. So, this is how we configure that. Under the hood, it will set up your compiler in the right way. Okay. Uh, what we received for um, TypeScript specifically during this year? There are a lot of changes. I will not uh, uh, one more time to share with you what you can find in release notes, but the last update i need to highlight it's switch true in typescript you can add such construction what you can see on the screen and it help uh, you to make branches for your code much simpler for example, if you will think typically we do something like switch case for TypeScript and num uh, or possible values of uh, some of variables. But here from application code, you received amazing feature for simplify your code by providing cases for every branch. I very like that and already refactoring uh, part of my code regarding uh, different state management of uh, uh, REST API resources and code looks much better now. I need to also highlight TypeScript ecosystem problems. On the first uh, point, of course, uh, is any and spread uh, syntaxes. The most uh, common haters comment is issues based on spread. So if you, for example, you using spread with maps or object, a TypeScript will have some workaround, but for edge cases, it will not work as you expect. And because of that, I strongly recommend with TypeScript to use spread very carefully. Object assign has much better TypeScript support, but it's again, it's no common knowledge if you develop this TypeScript on a daily basis, at least half year. And also, uh, there are very often situations when we received any notation from our system card. And as a result of that, we typically need to write something like uh, uh, casting to require type. And if you see any, you need to know that there is a good point to change this to unknown. In this case, your code will be much more secure. And for example, what we see in TypeScript for last two years, by default, in catch block, error is unknown. It's not TypeScript problem. It's JavaScript problem that we can throw any, any, or we can throw string, we can uh, error, instance we can throw object what it's not error like and because of all of this typescript issues what under the hood is a reason how we use javascript we receive blaming for typescript but it's what we need to use for write app code we don't have well adaptation for feature what was introduced uh, more than one year it does config extend from array uh, what i mean on 
this slide you see that we extend uh, from string. Here it can be array of strings and as a result we can uh, receive extended from several of configuration. For example, you can extend from a Node.js 20 and strictest. Uh, what will make the best practices for your code base. But nowadays, if you will see the most of our um, ecosystem doesn't support that. Uh, for example, you will not receive the test not working correctly. You will not receive uh, working correctly uh, as linked with the syntaxes. But it's not TypeScript issue, it's ecosystem issue. Not all resources adopted to use these features. Also, we need to highlight regarding our app code that ECMAScript and TypeScript has conflicts. Well-known issue with decorators. We don't want to say that we will switch from TypeScript to ECMAScript. We know that this for five or 10 years, it can be significant technical debt, but we are okay that as Node.js developers. Why? Because in uh, two years, we need at least update our Node.js runtime for be secure enough. Similar situation regarding conflicts we have for uh, ergonomic brand checks, it's hashtag vote in ECMAScript we use for mark private fields. In uh, TypeScript, we already have visibility modifiers like private, protected, and uh, public. And this is actually two different ways to do the same things uh, from application code standpoint, but different result in compiling. And this is actually different performance would can significantly change between different versions or run times. So this and what we can see in next uh, one or two year, then uh, switch to will have similar conflict with stage proposal pattern matching. We wait this proposal to ship on stage three so long, so TypeScript make decision to use such construction. It will be not truly conflict on code level, but it's actually two different ways to do the same things. What I recommend to do with uh, such issues, set up your linters. I pro already pro uh, recommended uh, several times on my channel to use Unicorn as link, and I will do this one more time. So this package is uh, absolutely amazing for improve readability of your source code and uh, if you're looking for right place for following some best practices i recommend to use that for your application code level okay we're going to next and so uh, we switching from uh, application code level to system code and by system code, we actually think regarding two parts. The first part is our node modulus folder. And let's make a quick look to what we have in npm run. npm run is uh, open source uh, solution uh, what was created as a gist first, but it's not um updated uh it was like uh, 1000 packages and right now you can see that you need to switch to fork 
uh, created by this Leo dog. And here we can see packages up to date because this guest one I'm highlighting is was a source, but what I'm using right now for check popularity of one or another package is this link. What you can see here is that the most popular package, what we install the most as JavaScript developers is Chalk. So ter terminal string styling done right. And because of the uh, result, what you can see here, like Chalk, Commander, or uh, Yarks, we can say that the most common use for Node.js is actually run as CLI, not as runtime uh, for your application code, but as CLI tool, what we as JavaScript developers, including front end, uh, we use on daily basis. We can see here that we have already deprecated package moment and Based on this, I can definitely say you that what we see and trends and how it actually will change for or whole community or ecosystem level, it will have significant delay. We have thousands, millions of sites created on uh, jQuery based, and it's okay. So. What we can see that in our surface place, it's types for not. And it's one more time uh, reason why I'm saying that uh, Node.js and TypeScript, it's something we would we use on a um, daily basis for application code layer. Uh, if we will see the most popular library, not framework, but library for REST development, of course it will be Express. Because uh, Node.js and Express, it's something good under the hood we can see almost on every framework. But what is the most popular framework for Node.js development? We can scroll a little bit. And of course, we will find in the first hundred of or thousand, we will found nest. Nest, nest, nest. Let's find this nest common. And it's even more popular than Fastify, what uh, is actually more than just library. If you compare this express, it's really framework for create simple REST based application. When we talk and get Nest, Nest nowadays is standard de facto for uh, start Node's project. Of course, if you will have something not specific like REST uh, and some workers for your queue, you can think regarding other frameworks. And during next year, when we will have more and more AI related projects, we will see a bigger adaptation for Lang chain and similar uh, solution. Lang chain is Second framework would I recommend to learn uh, for next year. The first is of course Nest.js because it's something what we have uh, like standard de facto. You can think about Nest as Spring Boot in Java world. So uh, this framework um, or something like uh, solution um, because it will evolve a lot and receive competitors during next year. Um, it's how we will work this LLMs. So large language model would is represented as 
chat uh, GPT uh, is what we need to query from our source code and we need to manage our prompts and change them in some way. And Planck chains with these models like engines, model input, output prompts, it's something what we as Node.js developers already use during this year. And we'll continue to evolve this usage in next year. Actually, in parallel, in offline track right now, uh, Vitaly Ratushny uh, do his talk regarding all AI uh, things and uh, prompt engineering too. Good talk, and I recommend you also watch that. So, we talk a little bit regarding system code and what we need to say regarding uh, internal or closed code what you typically create you should do that in the same way as you do for your open source code you need to use code generation and uh, for example for integration with zoom or for one of my project i use up the generated api so i sorry, after generated SDK. So I get uh, Zoom API as uh, open API doc. I don't know why they remove that, but so uh, it was like, uh, represented as this JSON file and I, just after generating this with open API TypeScript con gap. You have very similar solution for almost all uh, specification based API. For GraphQL you have code GAN. So you can use these things. Uh, you can ha have this for web sockets, you can have this for anything. And what I engage you to use for your internal source code is publish for internal and PAM registry or open source registry uh, your uh, SDKs what you need to generate from your code spec and even more not just developers should generate sdk for front-end developers and update that when you release new version in this way your application development process will be much better okay we jump into next things we discuss a little bit regarding system code and uh, we talk, start talking regarding not just itself regarding built-in models so what killer feature regarding built-in models we see in documentation uh, for 20 version we start to see stability index for experimental it's big then for long term because they added 1.2 release candidate so if you see some feature what you want to add um, uh, in your source code for a product development this release candidate is almost good to go why almost because if we will see uh, how it's actually will move to stable it's almost all the time will not have breaking change so this is idea for this release candidate you can think regarding this status of stability index similar like uh, uh, proposal of stage three for the 
39. So let's see what was introduced. Um, first of all, it was improvement for security and this model based permissions, which is created for limit, not just permission to work with your operation system, with file systems. From my perspective, it's more protection for local environment. Because in production or in any uh, code, or sorry, cloud environment, you will use Docker. So only during local development, you actually will need that. And um, similar issues try to resolve with Dino and I don't think think that right now JavaScript community uh, adult enough for use these benefits. Next thing is single executable application. Uh, it's cool feature because very often we need to um, ship our code as desktop application for business needs. But it's typically not for Node.js developers. It's, uh, you can say that it's desktop developers or hybrid developers who need to create application, not only for front-end, but for desktop. Will I recommend to use for my clients this approach? No. Because we have Electron and this single executable application is actually designed as ability to fit the most use cases. From my perspective, Go will be much better solution if we need to make a CLI-based published uh, package uh, what will be run on other machine if, where we don't want to install. One more thing what we have, and this is I believe the most excited news regarding all release notes in uh, Node.js 20 is built in support dot for dot and file. Friendly reminder, for configuring behavior of your Node.js uh, application, we use configuration variables. It's uh, common approach and highlighted in 20 factor apps. So before that you need to use some packages like .env. Now you can remove that and just add env file. We actually will use this functionality only for local development for all other environments like CI, CD or run times in, in, in production uh, will be covered by configured environment variables in your Docker or uh, what runtime do you use for run your Node.js application. Ask about that your DevOps. But what we can do now, it's fully remote dot and package and use uh, for local uh, environment run with this flag in your npm scripts or add this as environment variable for your local development to check now config.env or any other file i recommend to use .env because it's typically not published uh, in uh, your source code Regarding uh, uh, .env, I will not lose it at all. I dated the .env save merged as part of .env for a long time. What .env save is uh, my favorite package for years for compare .env example and uh, existing environment variables after you read dot and file uh, and see that all environments are actually matched. You can do the same in one or two lines of code what will help you to 
uh, check that without dot env or dot env save. So it's good to know. Uh, next thing, it's test runner. I do love TDD approach. It's not required for all cases, and uh, instead of using outdated Mocha or modern Jest, ability to use test runner with stable flag is very very cool. I think that for uh, system level we uh, at most cases will use these things for application code when we need to check our integration with uh, some uh, third parties like stripe or integration with your database we will continue to run uh, our application um, it will have runtime and in this case it will be better to use just or some packages like super test for uh, have built-in um, utils uh, for doing sorry uh, uh, utils from package from uh, built-in we don't have any support for testing approach with that next uh, things is uh, mm, board highlighted for regarding uh, single executable that it's actually um, can be not like one JavaScript files, it can be converted as a blob, and it's uh, also cool to know. Uh, but again, Electron, from my perspective, will be more often used for product development. I'm switching to alternative runtimes, and here we can see uh, three uh, typical uh, binners. And of course, it's not just itself. As alternatives, we see uh, uh, Dino and Bun. Why well, actually added, added uh, not just here? Because if you will see, when we talk and we get a Node.js as runtime, we talk and we get an LTS version. But for most of cloud vendors, you have a little bit different runtime for your serverless. And because of that, you need to be sure that you understand difference. For example, what environment variables by default you have, what packages are already installed. I very often see situation when uh, for cloud functions, we install sharp when we already have image magic under the hood and we don't need to uh, install uh, binaries for work with Sharp, and because of that, you need to uh, use SmartAway for create your uh, cloud functions. Or AWS Lambda with similar approach when you have cold start issues, when you have two big node models. Dino and Ban are focused on developer experience, but all alternative. Uh, uh, solution what we have including uh, vendor specific stuff it's to reuse the system and what you will see the uh, lack of cloud vendor support it will be hard to switch from uh, dino uh, back to node.js and performance similar to not and you don't need to do that the last but not the least is business risks. When we talk regarding uh, Node.js, we know that Google is paying for eight, a V8 as engine, but what we will have as community if something happened with um, BAM course, who is actually paying for that? So, business typically try to use uh, the most boring technologies, and nowadays, not just so mature, so it's a little bit boring. And switching to other uh, runtimes, 
I don't think will something would business see as benefit. But I do see benefits of playing with other uh, run times for local development. And we also have alternative uh, run time, what we typically run during local development as TypeScript developers test. It's a shame for our community that this tool was not updated more than one year. And because of that, we see problems what I highlighted with extents and similar issues. I think that I need one more time highlight that in infrastructure we use cloud name approach because I Node.js and Cloud Native. So, if you read this book, I, at every conference I need at least recommend one book. So this right book to read during next year. And of course, is reason why Cloud Native is important for um, business because it's uh, focused. Uh, on time to market. And if you think and regarding improve your cloud native knowledge as Node.js developer, you will very fast evolve yourself to cloud engineers. I think that's all uh, from my side. Um, it's time to questions. I don't know if we'll have this as part of the stream or we will do that at our Discord. Yes, thank you, Nikita. It was extremely helpful for me personally and I believe for our community. Uh, unfortunately, we have only time for one question here and we move to Discord voice chat. So as I don't see questions from the Discord, I'll ask a um, question myself. So in your opinion, uh, what is missing in Node.js right now? What do you miss in Node.js personally? Mm, I think uh, what I wish to have is better troubleshooting. Because right now, if you will check, you typically want to see error stack trace. You have a debugger uh, tool, but you know, you it's very hard for you to uh, press some button uh, and uh, store snapshot, what will be easy for you to uh, troubleshoot and debug, not from C++ level but from you know just i want to uh, see this and this snapshot and show me different in this and this uh, um, variables from my source code and this is something would typically uh, we try to emulate during our uh, troubleshooting with console log on this right approach when we run on debugger so this is something what i wish to have so, like this. Also, I need yes. to highlight that we talk at with, uh, almost uh, at the end of my talk regarding uh, alternative runtime, and you need to start introduction for our next speaker, and it will be differently comparing the runtimes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Nikita. So let's move on to our Discord voice chat. We can continue our conversation there. Nikita will be waiting there. Thank you so much. One more time.